When I was around eight years old, um, this was in Nova Scotia. I grew up in Cape Breton, and um, I was around eight years old, and I fir first heard the word God. And I was outside playing, and, I, and the person said to me that God lives up in the sky. So I said, oh, really? You know, what does that mean? So then when I arrived in Toronto when I was around 10, I had met this girl in uh, my building that wanted to go to church. So I decided that, you know, okay, well, let me go and find out, you know, what church is all about. And even though I had a Christian background somewhat, but my parents don't really practice anything. So I... Um, you know, it just kept going to different churches, and I found that there was too many inconsistencies. So I, you know, I, I just, I always had that need, you know, to learn, to know about my creator, if there was a, a creator. So um, when I was around 24 years old, I was in school, and I had met this young man, and I also had met, um, he was a Muslim, actually, but he wasn't a practicing Muslim. So when after well, I also had met a girl in my class that was wearing full hijab like myself and she had a face covering on. So I had um, I had asked her, you know, why does she wear that on her face? And you know, it just it looked so strange to me, right? So I said, well, can you tell me why you wear that? And she had explained to me that in Islam, you know, um, the beauty of a woman, a Muslim woman, is something that is so honored and, and respected that we don't share it with with everybody so we conceal it and it's also you know backed up from the Quran that Muslim women have to cover so I thought that was interesting so then I said okay fine I left it and I had um, a relationship with this man at school he was like a boyfriend so um, I had later um, I also had another friend his uh, I'm not gonna mention his name but um, he was an Arab and he was Christian and he thought, I guess, at the time that I was going to convert to Islam because I had this boyfriend, and um, even though I had no interest really about Islam, right? So <laughs> he actually prompted me to learn about Islam because he used to bring, like, I used he used to work at this gas station close to my neighborhood, and he used to bring me um, information protesting, going completely against Islam, saying that Muslim women are. Like, I guess I should be honest and say exactly what he said, that are whores and that they're allowed to have more than one man, right? And this is actually coming from the Quran, he said. So I said, oh, I said, you know, I said to this guy, I'm like, I really don't think that's true, I said, because, like, my reference point back to the girl at school, I said, this doesn't make any sense, right? And I said, why would you cover if she was promiscuous? So I said, well, I, I don't know about that. So I said, and I guess in his, his mind, he was trying to, meet, trying to get me away from, you know, converting because he thought, you know, because of this Muslim boyfriend, he was going to marry me. Or it, was like, it was like he was in a panic, you know, like telling me, bringing literature to me. He, even he would bring literature to my mother at the, the store and pass it off to my mother. So I said, you know, I don't even want to read this. I said, I'm not interested in any, you know, anything about this. So I, anyway, I just said I got fed up, and that made me interested. So I decided to go to the mosque and, and find out about what Islam was. And uh, to be honest, I didn't really find out too, too much from, from there. And I thought, you know, from what I did learn, that he was wrong. There was nothing in the Quran that stated that Muslim women were, are allowed to be promiscuous in any way. So I thought my journey ended. Um, but it didn't. It actually just begun from there. So <laughs> I went back and um, I later found out that, you know, um, I was pregnant for, for the Muslim guy at school. And, um, but he left me. So I was now five months pregnant. And I was on the subway going to this new school. And from there, um, I looked up. I was sitting on the subway and I looked up and I saw Salia, the girl that I had met with the full hijab at school prior, like before, and I'm like, oh, I said, hi, how are you, and she's like, fine, and I said, where are you going, and she's like, well, I'm going to this new school, and I said, well, what, when, it just so happened that we were both going to the same school now. We were, we became very good friends, and I learned a lot about Islam from her, and it was never, you know, I wasn't really, like, before going to the musket, masjid, in, or the mosque, and inquiring for myself I, I you know Islam just came to me now and you know we I became friends with her and a few other girls at school and they, she would often invite me you know to her house and I learned so much about Islam you know the character of a Muslim and you know and what also I found what found very interesting was that she actually memorized this the Quran which is like
to me just a book at the time, and it was like word for word. She memorized it, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I wanted to know, like, what was in this book? You know, what was so amazing about a book that someone would memorize word for word? And, you know, there's just so many things that, you know, that amazed me. And being around a Muslim person, a practicing Muslim person, um, do you see the beauty of Islam? And I, I, I don't know how to sum that up or give you one particular point, but I, you know, I would go to her home and I would see how she would interact, how, how she would dress, how she would eat, even how she prayed. I mean, I was out with them many, numerous times where she would, you know, say, oh, Crystal, you know what, I have to go pray. I have to find a place to pray. I found that amazing. Like, you're just going to stop from, in the, and it was winter time, you know, freezing, you know. And, and I, to be honest, I still wasn't interested in converting to Islam at all. I just said, nice religion, but not for me. So, um, and so, um, after I had my daughter, um, <laughs> I... You know, I, I started realizing, like, like, what am I going to teach my daughter? Like, what am I going to teach my daughter? Like, how am I going to grow my daughter up? I, I'm going to cry because it's emotional. So, anyway, um, and the, the guy, he never came back, you know. Um, like, he, he did after I had my daughter, right? He wanted to, like, I had inquired about him to see her. But, so I didn't really know how to, you know, raise this beautiful baby that I had so and I remember back to how Sylvia was and how how her parents raised her and I just saw this you know another way of living right other than my way which was basically just you live and you do whatever you like in this world you want to do this you go do it there's no there's no direction in life so um, I decided to look more into Islam at that point on my own you know, so Celia now got pregnant, <laughs> and she started working at the masjid just not far from here. And I said, "Well, Celia, I'm going to pop over, and you know, every day because I was home with my daughter." And I said, "Let me just come over, and you know, we'll talk about the Quran. I want to know more about it." It was hard. It was hard to find the concept of you know what is God. And from from these experiences that I had at the masjid, I came to realize that there was a God. And um, you know, one day I decided, you know, to go to the mosque. My daughter was six months at this point, and I was there, and I was in the room, and you know, like I was serious. I really wanted to know about this religion before I converted, because I never was baptized before. I never had any, you know, conversion to any religion. So I wanted to find out, you know, really was this for me, you know? And from there, um, I was there one day, just you know, like like every other day, just visiting her in the office and talking about Islam and. God and who he was and you know what Islam can offer me and my daughter and um, so one day there was a funeral of a baby girl and from there I just thought life's so short you know like you have to really make it a decision about where you're going so um, I converted that day. I accepted Islam, right? But I didn't know how to pray. You know, I didn't even have Islamic clothes. I, I was going back home now to, you know, my house. And that was my mother. How was I going to explain that to my mother? You know, and and there wasn't a lot of support for the new Muslim because I think, and it's not saying that Muslim people that are born in Islam don't care. I think they care a lot. It's just that they, maybe there's, you know, not relating to the fact that, you know, she looks like a Muslim. She's got hijab on. She must have a Muslim family. They assume. They don't know what you're going home to. My life is, is different because, well, <laughs> I can just, I just think of one thing. I, maybe this might be not the best thing to say, but health-wise, I'm so much more healthy. I used to smoke. I don't have to say that, but I used to smoke and I used to drink. I used to get sick to my stomach from drinking. I don't drink anymore. I haven't tasted a drop of alcohol. I haven't smoked. Alhamdulillah. I, I, it's just, you know how many times I tried to quit smoking? I smoked for like 15, like no, like 11, 11 years, sorry, 11 years. And I tried and I tried and tried and tried. 
I am a successful non-smoker right now <laughs> and I just owe that to God because there's no way I could have done it like especially you know with the support of the type of people I'm around you know it's it's your environment you know my environment is so much more healthy um, I have a direction in my life I, I, have, I have more spirituality in my life like I feel that I know why I'm here you know like I wake up in the morning and it makes sense like I actually know why I'm here on earth <laughs> before it's like you're just here and you're like what are you doing here I used to have conversations with my friends my non-Muslim friends and and say we don't we would come up with ideas why we're here but now I know that gives you direction that gives you a lot of confidence right that you're not alone and so I'm I'm better spiritually mentally emotionally my daughter oh you know I see a future that is with God in her life not like how I grew up and that entails many many positive things you know um, I, I always dream like you know she's gonna grow up and she's gonna be better than me you know like much better you know she won't go through all the things that I went through because she's gonna be protected by Islam you know they like drinking won't be in her life having boyfriends maybe having children without someone there with her you know like what I went through you know I want her to know the value of herself and I think she will Islam will teach her the value of who she is